MRI, it's, you know, it's an acronym that stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging. Kids are naturally curious. We ask a lot of questions. But it helps us learn. I'm Riley. I'm Lizzie. Hi, I'm Dr. Grigg with the Radiology Department here at Creos Health. Today we're going to be discussing Magnetic Resonant Imaging, or MRI. Today we're going to discuss MRI, you know, what it entails, um, what you should expect as a patient, things like that. So what exactly is an MRI? MRI, it's, you know, it's an acronym that stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging. So basically we use big magnets, electricity, and radio frequency to image a patient. So we can use different types of modalities. When I say modality, that means different types of ways we can image inside the body. So why do patients get MRIs? It's so that we can image inside their body, so they have a specific problem. Generally, the majority of the MRIs that we do are for back pain okay, and joint pain. And when I say joint pain, mostly knees, shoulders, and ankles are the three main joints that we generally use. And the other big category is what's called neuroimaging or imaging of the brain. Neuroimaging actually entails both spine and brain, but generally um, when we say neuro, we're talking about the brain. So looking inside the head and then the joints. And, and the reason they get them is for any, any reason. You know, we have athletes that come in and they have joint pain, they hurt their knee. Why can't you just use an x-ray? Well, MRI is really good about showing the fine detail of the soft tissues. And when I say soft tissues, like distinguishing between muscle um, fat and bone and the ligaments and tendons that make up the joints and also it's really good at looking inside the head and looking at all the fine details, the nerve roots, tiny little structures that you can't see on x-ray. It just tells us a little bit more detail. It doesn't expose the patient to any radiation at all so it's, it's safe in that, in that regard. How does it not expose radiation? Because we don't use radiation. We use giant magnets and they're not necessarily giant magnets, it's just a, a really strong magnetic field that's created by us um, pushing electricity through coils, which creates a, a magnetic field. And then through that, we use radio frequency and different types of magnetism to, to get pictures. It gives us really nice images. It doesn't expose the patient to radiation. And it gives us uh, opportunity to look inside the body in different ways than, that we can't do with ultrasound and, and x-rays and other machines that we use. So I heard that patients have to stay still in an MRI. Why is that? MRI, it takes up to 45 minutes sometimes to scan an entire head. And the reason that is because it's very slow. As the magnets are tracking back and forth and creating those images, it has to move extremely slow as we go through the body. And so you can imagine if it's going slow, you have to hold really still because any movement is going to cause um, what's called image degradation or it's going to cause the images to be blurry. Another thing that people don't like about the MRI is it's a somewhat of a confined space. I mean, it's a big, decently sized tunnel that you lay in, but some people are what's called claustrophobic. But they're making them now, and our new scanner here in the new hospital is pretty big. It's pretty open, so we don't have as much problem with that anymore. Oh, so you can listen to music while you're in there, and it, and it takes your mind off of it. It helps you hold still. And also, we'll, give, we'll, we'll involve the anesthesiologist in the scans, and they'll give sedation and almost put the children to sleep or the adults who can't hold still help them fall asleep so that they can have the scan and won't move as much during it. What if it's like life-threatening but the scan takes too long? Always, always patient safety is first. You know, so you want to make sure that they're going to be, first of all, is it safe to put them in the scanner? Because what do you think would happen if you walk into an MRI scanner that's magnetized and you got let's say, keys in your pocket. What would happen to the keys if they're metal? They get pulled out. So on the outside doors, of before you can even go in, there's a metal detector, and it detects any metal. So we're not allowed to go in to the MRI if you have any metal on. So I take my keys out of my pocket, I take my rings off, and make sure that I'm what's considered MRI safe before I actually go in to even talk to the patient. So every patient that goes into a scanner has a checklist that we look at to make sure that they're what's called MRI safe. They don't have any metal on their body. They don't have any metal inside of their body. So for instance, they haven't had any kind of a pacemaker or um, old 
metal implants or some people have been in wars and they have what's called shrapnel metal from bombs or bullets that have gotten stuck in their skin and they're still there. So we got to make sure that none of that's in places that's going to move around at all, okay, before we let them go in. What's the best and most successful MRI you've done? Every day there's people that come to our MRI scanner who have specific problems, like they have cancer and we're looking to see if that cancer is spread into their head or they have back problems, back pain, and they want to they want to find a, a reason for their back pain. and um, The majority of the time we can find a reason. We can either say to them, they can leave the scanner and within 24 hours they can get an answer. And we can tell them, no, as far as we can see, there's not any cancer in, inside of your head. Or, you know what, we saw something on your back that's probably causing you back pain. So then they can go on and see a surgeon or they can see their oncologist and get the problem fixed. But that's the fun part. Another part about my job is that generally we get to answer questions. The patient comes with a question and we hopefully they can leave with an answer. Why would women that are pregnant get a fetal MRI rather than an ultrasound? There's a couple reasons that we do them. So pregnant women can present sometimes with abdominal pain. And if we think they have appendix, normally what we would do is we would do a CAT scan to see if they have appendix after we've done an ultrasound. And if, but the problem with uh, doing a CAT scan on a pregnant lady is that we're exposing her and also the fetus to radiation, which we don't like to do. So that's one reason we would do an MRI. We would do an MRI of the mother to see if we can find the appendix, and it saves the baby and the mom from being, ex being exposed to radiation for abdominal pain. And then also, a lot of times, we'll look to see if there's any fetal anomalies, like is there anything wrong with the baby that we maybe saw an ultrasound, but we're not 100% sure what it is or we need to do some additional imaging. Is there a way for a patient to communicate with the person outside of the machine? Yeah, um, that's a really good question. So let's say that you're in there and you need to cough or you can't um, hold still any longer, you need to take a break. So we actually have a microphone in there and you just push a button and that automatically tells the technologist who's running the machine. and they can talk to you directly through the headphones and so you can hear them. And a lot of times we're constantly communicating with the patient during the procedure, for instance, if we need them to hold their breath. Because by holding your breath, you actually are going to be the stillest uh, you are. Because even if you're trying to hold exactly still, if you're still breathing, your lungs are going up and down, which causes the organs in your body to move a little bit all together. So what we need to do is we'll say, okay, hold your breath. We'll hold their breath for about 15 seconds and we'll do the scan and then we'll say, okay, go ahead and breathe and you breathe. And then we'll say, okay, hold your breath again, and we'll do some more of the scan. So that's how we can um, get away with decreasing motion is by ha having patients hold their breath. But in order for us to do that, we have to be able to communicate with you. So yeah, there's constant communication. What happens if you still can't see what you're trying to see with an MRI? So one thing we can do is we can put an IV in the patient, and we can actually give them contrast. What the contrast does is it causes the tissues to be a little bit brighter, so it helps us uh, evaluate small, the smaller nerves and some of the more fine tissue in, in the head or the spine or even some of the joints. So that's one thing we can do is we can give contrast. We don't always do that, but that's, that's one of kind of our problem solving tools that we can use. That's one thing that makes our job a lot of fun as physicians. So I really appreciate you guys coming because I think it's important for everybody to learn about the different types of imaging that we can use to look inside of people's bodies and answer questions. So I think it's great that you guys are trying to learn more about it and help others learn more about it. And remember, MRI is, is fairly safe, and there's a bunch of things that you need to know going into it, but as long as you know that, it should be an enjoyable experience for whoever gets an MRI. Thank you for yeah. having us. No problem. Thank Thanks you. for coming.